Good morning. Welcome to Stock Market Today. It's Wednesday, July 8th, 2020. I am your host, Dan Russo, the Chief Market Strategist at Chaikin Analytics, and you can find me on Twitter. I'm at Dan Russo underscore CMT. Stock Market Today brought to you today and every day by Chaikin Analytics. Head over to chaikinanalytics.com forward slash today. Sign up for a free email where I get a lot of the content for this show. We also give you daily stock ideas to consider upon further analysis that hit your inbox every trading day before the market opens. So U.S. equities finished lower yesterday, closing near the session lows, with the S&P 500 breaking a five-day winning streak. Consumer staples was the only sector higher on the day. Energy and financials lagged. Treasuries were stronger with the curve flattening. The dollar was stronger on the yen and euro crosses. Gold finished up 90 basis points, WTI crude was flat on the day. Your outperformers, staples, materials, and utilities, your underperformers, energy, financials, and industrials. As we get to the desk this morning, it's a little bit of a mixed bag. We've been going back and forth across the uh, unchanged line, but futures are up about 10 basis points. Asian markets were mostly higher overnight with China adding to recent strength. European markets are weaker. Treasuries are unchanged to slightly stronger. The dollar is mixed on the major crosses. Gold up 20 basis points, WTI crude down 40 basis points to kick us off on a Wednesday morning, a day after resistance continued to hold. We've been highlighting 3150 to 3250, that gap that opened in early June. Uh, tried to test it again yesterday, uh, early in the day, and then faded into the close with the major ETFs and indices closing near their lowest levels of the day. 3,000 to 3,100 remains support below that 2850 to 2950. So not a ton has changed, right? We've been highlighting this 3,000 level for a while. You have both the 50 and 200 day moving averages converging in that range, right? So that, that support zone becomes important or remains important. And to me, as long as it holds, the February highs are in play. We've talked about resistance in 3,150 to 3,250, and it's really been the lower bound of that resistance range that has been doing the heavy lifting of late. Now, we are overbought in the near term. Whether you look at our shake and charts or you use something like the 13 period CCI, uh, you can see that we are now overbought. Shake and money flow continues to fade and is negative here in the near term. So that is the structure of the S&P 500. Realistically, not a ton has changed, right? Still looks like back and forth action within this range. And a break one way or the other will kind of define trading going forward. Uh, in the meantime, I think it makes sense to continue to focus on leading areas of the market for your bullish ideas. And notice that some areas of the market that had been performing well of late, think energy, think financials, think industrials, are beginning to fade on a relative basis. And that's an interesting development that I am watching closely. Now, our market in a minute. What are we writing about today? Well, SPY holds the range and the queues fade into the close. Uh, the Q's made a new high yesterday and then closed near the lows of the day. So we'll, we'll keep an eye on that. We'll take a look at a chart a little bit later on the show. Major market ETFs, this goes for the Q's, the SPY, IWM, all at or near overbought levels uh, but based on our shorter term indicator. Options traders remain greedy. We'll take a look at sentiment today. Uh, speculative, uh, both large and small specs continue to reduce their short exposure with the S&P 500 holding above the 200-day moving average. Aerospace and defense, it's an industry that we're, it's a group that we're focused on today because it's overbought and lagging. Futures point to a mixed open, as I said. Taking a look now from a power bar perspective at the major indices, uh, the Dow remains bearish from a power bar uh, ratio standpoint, five to seven, after losing about a percent and a half yesterday. S&P 500 down 1%. The ratio swings back to the bearish side of the coin, 94 to 105. NASDAQ is an outperformer on the day. 34 to 9 bulls to bears after losing 70 basis points yesterday and small caps underperformed, down 1.8%, 495 to 316 bulls to bears. Bonds rallied, sending yields lower. According to the chicken power bar, small cap stocks are somewhat more bullish than large cap stocks, but the major indexes across the board are mixed. Our stock of the day, speaking of aerospace and defense, whose chart we'll look at a little bit later on in the show, I think I see a compelling bearish opportunity in Northrop Grumman, or if you've been kind of playing the rebound in this name, it looks to have run out of steam in my opinion. NOC, the ticker symbol, closed at 304, spot 47 yesterday, down 2.5%. Weak trend, weak industry group for this stock with a bearish rating here at Chaikin Analytics. Take a look at the relative strength towards the bottom of the chart. Increasing intensity of underperformance. Look at that money flow of late. 
Uh, also uh, seeing some persistent uh, bearish money flow. Overbought, oversold indicator moving into an overbought position. So if I'm long Northrop, I think you have to ask yourself, why am I holding this stock? It's underperforming, it's bearish, and it looks to be under distribution. I think if you're looking for bearish opportunities, uh, you can look for a setup here in Northrop. NOC, the ticker symbol featured in my note and on the show today. Turning to the sector tracker now, the movement of the major sectors over the last five days. Comms at the top of the list as Facebook has rebounded uh, quite sharply, really. Uh, after that news a couple of weeks ago about advertisers pulling away from the platform market seems to be looking past that and continuing to pile in to the fan mag mega cab consumer tech and tech stocks materials in the number two slot over the past week of trading. It's kind of the one area of the reflation type trade. Uh, that looks most appealing to us. Discretionary and staples round out the top four. Kind of interesting to see both of those groups at the top of the list. Healthcare, tech, utes, and REITs are middle of the road, all higher over the last five days. Industrials, financials, and energy. So this is kind of what I've been talking about. All right. I thought that the rotation into value, the rotation into a reflation type trade uh, was counter trend in nature, and it begins to be playing out in my opinion. If we look at the relative performance of the financials, especially the banks, take a look at energy, and now industrial is starting to fade as well. Obviously, aerospace and defense is part of that industrial complex. So we'll take a look at that in just a moment. Our industry in focus, healthcare services. So yesterday, uh, we looked at healthcare equipment. Today, we'll look at services. Services, not quite as compelling, in my opinion, uh, within the healthcare space as, say, equipment was, which we looked at yesterday. Uh, over the past six months, group's been an underperformer by about three and a quarter percent. Does have a strong power bar ratio, 15 to six bulls to bears there, which ranks at number nine of 21 subsectors. It's moved down one slot over the past week. So some names that might be compelling to take a look at and do a little bit more work. Triple S Management, GTS, Centene Corp, CNC, and Providence Services, PRSC, all have very bullish shake and power gauge ratings. And if we look at the fund, you'll see what I mean. Um, you know, bullish rating, strong trend above the trend line. It is overbought here in the near term. Money flow is mixed, right? Trying to shift back uh, towards the bullish side. But really, it's this relative strength that I'd like to see get going in a better way to give me more confidence that we can kind of break out of this consolidation and move to the upside. Um, relative strength, I mean, it's flat. It's an inline performer uh, of late. And that's fine. The market's rallying. So it's kind of moving with the market, right? This chart looks very similar to that of SPY, right? Here's your gap. We've tried to fill it. We keep getting turned away at resistance, but support continues to hold. Um, bigger picture, right? I'm, I can't argue with the bullish rating and the strong trend. Near term overbought likely needs a little bit more time to consolidate in my opinion. So let's take a look at what is trending now. Yesterday's S&P 500 movers and shakers are gainers and losers. Walmart, uh, some news of a potential competitor product to Amazon Prime. Investors like what they heard there. Uh, stock up six and three quarters percent. Uh, ROL, provi they provided a business update. Uh, investors took that stock higher by 6.7% following that data point. Uh, APD announced a joint venture. Yesterday, the stock rallied six and a half percent. This morning, I see that their price target was increased at Deutsche Bank. So maybe potential follow through there on that on that uh, research report. PM with, is a bearish stock here, uh, up three point three percent yesterday as the FDA came out uh, with some commentary on a tobacco heating system. As that relates to uh, Philip Morris and you know, investors, like what they heard, they took the stock higher. Vertex, nothing company specific to drive trading in that stock. Uh, up 2.66% yesterday, a bullish rating here at Cheek and Analytics. So on the loser side of the board, uh, FTI, right, part of that in in energy group, right, that I still think is has a ton of work to do before any kind of uptrend could be deemed sustainable. FTI down 7.9% yesterday, but nothing company specific driving trading there. United gave an update on traffic uh, in and around the tri-state area here after, you know, New York and New Jersey and Connecticut started uh, implementing quarantines on people from hotspot states. 
Uh, United Airlines saying they saw a decline in traffic, stock down seven and a half percent. Devon Energy, again, part of that energy complex, down seven and a quarter percent. Mohawk, MHK, nothing company specific driving the trading in that one, down seven percent. American Airlines, down close to seven percent, likely in sympathy with United. Uh, didn't see anything uh, company specific come out of American to drive trading in that name yesterday. It leads me to believe it's a derivative play off of United's commentary. So we, let's dig in a little bit here on the charts. It's Wednesday. We look at sentiment uh, in the marketplace. In, in our note, we measure it a few ways, whether we're looking at things like the put call ratio, the VIX, the CNN fear greed index. I would say overall sentiment is mixed to greedy, but this chart still stands out to me. This is a uh, CBOE equity options put call ratio. It's a 13 day moving average of that put call ratio. And it remains uh, towards excessive greed, right? Down below 0 0.6, still hovering around levels that were seen at the beginning of the year when the market was making, or the S&P and the Qs were making their all time highs. Uh, so you can see how it ebbs and flows, but it just, you know, options traders remain excessively greedy is kind of the takeaway from this chart. While the VIX has, you know, continued to decline, but still very much near elevated levels, still, you know, kind of hovering around that 30 mark or slightly below it uh, here in the near term. And those are kind of, it's kind of still near levels that we've seen at peaks over the past five years. And my note, I have a 10 day moving average of the VIX. It's still up around the levels that have been peaks over the past five years. So yes, volatility has come, come in a lot from the extremes, um, but still elevated from a historic perspective, certainly uh, elevated over what we've seen uh, during the course of the past five years. So I'd say that sentiment overall is mixed. This uh, put call ratio, is excessively greedy, but the VIX kind of paints a little bit of a different story. Uh, if we look at spec positioning, and I don't have it here in the, in the presentation today, but it is in my note, uh, where large and small specs on a net basis continue to cover their shorts, the 52-week Z-score continuing to move higher as the index holds above uh, its 40-week or 200-day moving average. To me, um, something else I do in my notes on Wednesday is just kind of give a, a midweek market update on the major market ETFs, whether it's, you know, the Qs, the SPIs, the IWM, just to get a sense of for what's going on. And, you know, based on our overbought, oversold indicator, all three of those are at or near overbought levels, as I mentioned earlier. But what's interesting to me about the Qs, now we are bullish on the Qs. We've been bullish on the Qs from a trend perspective. Uh, but obviously, you know, getting timing right is important. Uh, and what I see here is that the last three peaks for QQQ, one, two, three, were met with lower RSI readings, right? So a negative divergence. Now, negative divergence are a wake-up sign, right? They're a wake-up call to say, hey, pay attention here. You can see rally to new highs yesterday and then close near the lows of the day. It's not an immediate call to action, but it's something to be aware of, right? Especially when at the same time, check and money flow uh, is starting to uh, signal the same divergences, right? A series of lower highs, right? Something similar happened here uh, back in the beginning of the year. Highs, lower highs, right? Lower highs in shake and money flow as well. I'm not saying the same exact thing has to play out, but I'm saying you want to be aware of it. You want to pay attention to it. You know, if you've kind of not been overly involved in this run, uh, probably doesn't make sense to chase it in the here and now. Right, give the opportunity to consolidate, maybe pull back a little bit, look for the RSI to hold above 40 or 50, and then it makes sense to get involved in that condition. And then finally, I said we would talk about aerospace and defense. Here's the chart, right? Uh, XAR, uh, the aerospace and defense ETF, does have a bearish rating here at Chaken Analytics. Here's the absolute uh, chart, right? Below a 200 day moving average, which acted as resistance to the rally. So, this is what I'm talking about. Rally, right, from deeply oversold conditions, fade from resistance. Now we're starting to see a breakdown of this uptrend, right? Low, 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 breakdown. RSI potentially shifting back towards bearish ranges, all while on a relative basis, uh, XAR is trading near the lower end of the recent range, unable to, uh, to break out on a relative basis in a meaningful way. So that'll wrap us up. Take us for a test drive shakenanalytics.com forward slash test drive. I'll be back with you tomorrow.
Hey, Grayson Rhodes here with Stock Charts. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed that video. If you did, consider giving it a like down below. Maybe leave us a comment. And if you're new to the channel, you can subscribe at the link up above. We're gonna bring you daily content from an incredible collection of technical analysts and financial experts.